What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode This is episode number 61 and we started today's episode off with a squad report here So you can see how the players are currently getting on as we're now in September A uh, friendly reminder for those of you out there who may not be aware Squad reports are shown at the start of every single in-game calendar month Along with the league tables and tournament trees and etc etc uh, Also as well sometimes I will show the league table at the end of the episode Usually as we're getting onto the season a little bit And the games before uh, become a lot more interesting um, But I have been reading the comments of late Some people have been asking me why I'm not showing squad reports as much as I used to. I've always done it at the start of every single in-game calendar month. It's just always something I've done and therefore it may take like three or four episodes before you see one but either way they're always showing at the start of every single in-game calendar month and of course now we're going to September you can see another one here. So take a look at the squad report here. As you can see a new signing just popping up on the screen right there. Connor Priyanka who came in in the last episode. Now if you missed the last episode I do recommend you go back and watch it. It was really really exciting. We had some unbelievable transfer deadline day drama. I did not think it was going to happen, but we managed to outstrength the German Giants by Munich and convince the severe winger, Conor Plianka, to sign for us instead of go to the Allianz Arena on the final hour of transfer deadline day. It was absolutely crazy. We also uh, signed Anaki Williams for £5 million from Bilbao and also sold Charlie Austin as well, finally, at a fourth time of asking. And also as well, we've been joining our Champions League group. And how about that for a group as well? Our first season Season in the Champions League, don't forget of Watford this season in the third season of the career mode. I did say that the aims of getting to the quarterfinal with the board, that's what they wanted, could be a little bit too much for us. And I said if we get ourselves a tough group, it may be, you know, one we'll fail. And you know, we need to reach the quarterfinal stage. When you uh, come out of the group stage, if you finish in first or second, you go to the round of 16 stage. I'm not even sure we'll make it out of our group. I mean, I know that's a bit pessimistic, and I know it sounds defeatist already, but we've got Real Madrid, who will be taking on in today's episode here for our first ever Champions League game, which is hard enough on its own. Bayer Leverkusen, a really decent German side, very decent on the game as well. And FC Basel, the Swiss side, who have a really decent record against the English side. So, yeah, I won't call it the group of death, but that's a really tough group, isn't it? Real Madrid, Bayer Leverkusen, and Basel as well. So we'll have to wait and see what we do there. But either way, that is going to be very tough for us to make it out of that group in second, let alone topping it. Well, you want width and you want quality in the width and probably they've got that with this new acquisition. Well, I think so, and uh, the one player that would be pleased to see him arrive is the centre forward because I think he can expect better service now from a lad that does swing in good crosses. We take on Hull City for the first game of today's episode here as they come and take us on at Vicarage Road. As you can see, Connor Plianka would go straight into the first team. I read the comments in yesterday's episode and quite a lot of you were asking me where Connor Plianka was going to play. Was Ryan Taller going to be dropped? The current left wing we have right now. As you can see, Ryan Taller stayed out there. Right now, the plan is play Connor Plianka on the right wing and see how he does. Of course, with the signing of Anaki Williams as well, who started on the bench in this game, it is going to be difficult for me to find out who's going to play where and what players are going to have to be sacrificed to the bench in order to fit the new signings in we'll have to wait and see but Conor Plianka will be a first team starter don't get me wrong he's our record signing at 26 million pounds of course he would go straight into the first 11 but Ryan Tal is going to stay in the left wing slot he does well there Loftus-Cheek again not too sure if we will try him as a striker or a CAM this year we'll have to wait and see but Conor Plianka the plan for the time being is to play him on the right side of the wing and see how he does and 44 minutes into his debut as well he'd win us a penalty so already a good start for Conor Plianka takes it round his man here gets it's taken down after the step over and the referee gives a penalty as El Mohamedi brings him to the floor. And that was a correct decision as well. The referee gives us a penalty on the stroke of half time. Conor Plianka on his debut wins it and Mario Balotelli who's had a red hot start to his Watford career stands up and has a chance to make it 1-0 just before the break. He didn't score against Swansea. Buffal got our only goal of the game in that game but he does score here on the stroke of half time sending the goalkeeper the wrong way and making it Watford 1 at Hull City 0. So Mario Balotelli converting the penalty He's just too reliable from penalties, man. Like, I know he's missed a couple in his career and everything, but whenever he stands up and he's 12 yards out, the ball's on the spot, you just feel like he's going to score. And it's the same in FIFA as well. And I'm someone who's missed quite a lot of penalties in FIFA before. Uh, offline, not as much as online. But with Mario Balotelli, like, every time we win a penalty with Balotelli in his career, I'm just going to think, you know, we, get, we got ourselves a goal there. They may as well just, you know, put the ball on the center circle instead because we're going to put this ball in the back of the net. It's obviously going to get the goal and uh, we'll probably make it one 
1-0. And that's what we did in this game. Watford won, Hull City 0, Balotelli opening the scoring. And in the 62nd minute, it was another goal for Super Mario as well. Conor Pianca won the penalty for the first goal, and he got the assist for this goal as well. Not sure whether he get credit with it or not. I should have checked, really. But as you can see, he goes down the right-hand side here, swings it across the centre. It does take a deflection, in all honesty. But Dini misses the ball. It comes to Mario Balotelli, and it's a great finish by Mario into the bottom corner. And that's already six goals in the Premier League. This being the fifth game of the Premier League season, six goals already for Mario Balotelli. That's absolutely crazy. That's already half of what Dini got last season for the entire season. That's just absolutely insane. What a beginning he's had to his Watford career, and he does make it Watford 2, Hull City 0. And in the 69th minute, after some nice passing here, we play out from the back as per usual. Joe Davis finds Nathaniel Klein, who chips it down the right hand side towards Obi Olari. Takes it around Harry Maguire here, beats Andrew Robertson as well with the fake shot, crosses the ball in. Who's in the centre? Do I need to tell you who's in the centre? Mario Balotelli, of course, heading in with a diving header and making it Watford free, whole city and else. So if you want someone to cross it into the centre, you probably want Obi Olari being the man in the centre to head it in. But instead, our giant striker off the bench swings it across himself, picks out Mario Balotelli with the diving header, puts it into the bottom corner, and that's already seven goals in the Premier League for our number 45. So absolutely incredible from Balotelli. Right now, he is just looking unbelievably good. And as a signing, you know, on a free transfer, I've said it every single episode, I think, since he's come in. But I did say it was going to be a gamble bringing Balotelli to Vicarage Road. How would he do? Well, I'm, I'm saying right now, man, seriously, if Balotelli's available in your career mode, you've got to pick the guy up. He's just insane. Unbelievably good finisher. And he does get his hat-trick there. His first of hopefully many in a Watford shirt. And does join Obi Olari and Troy Deeney as players that have got hat-tricks whilst being a Watford player. What a brilliant performance from this fella. Well, he goes across and grabs the match ball from the ref, a hat-trick, and that's to be treasured by any player. He's already well in front of the Premier League goal-scoring charts right now, and I'll be very surprised if someone else wins the Golden Boot this year. I've got big aims for Balotelli after the start he's made, but I think he's going to match them. He has been absolutely fantastic, and I do believe he'll be the first Watford player to claim the Golden Boot in the Premier League in this series. So a 9.2 for Balotelli. Unsurprisingly, my man the match. What a performance from Super Mario, and what a signing he is looking to be. Uh, still following out some more player training, and we also come into our first Champions League game of the series as well. Our third season here Watford we're in the Champions League now we want to stay in there for as long as possible we want to stay in there this season as well we got a very tough group by Leverkusen and Basel and of course this little side as well Real Madrid they are going to be an unbelievably difficult team to face both home and away and we take them on for the first game of our Champions League group here as well away from home at the Bernabeu well, he could be the star turn in this game three in his previous match hat-trick he'll be looking for more today and you'd certainly be forgiven for thinking that we might have our first defeat of the season here. Taking on Real Madrid away at the Bernabeu for our first ever Champions League game. But as you can see with the side I picked, it was one of the strongest ones possible. Buffar returned to the first 11 and lost his cheek, got a start up front in this game as well. And the reason I did that is because of what you'll see right here. He is such a good player when it comes down to holding the ball up and bringing his teammates into play, which is exactly what he does here with his teammate Konor Plyanka. The Ukrainian gives him the ball back, lost his cheek, goes through one-on-one, -on -one, and how is your luck right there? He not only hits one post, but hits two posts with the same shot. And eventually, you can see a dives on the rebound. So, so unfortunate from Loftus-Cheek there. But in the 43rd minute, he's added again. He's putting his weight around, throwing his weight around, throwing his body around, winning the ball back from a terrible throw-in, chesting it down, taking it around the last defender. And what a finish from Ruben as well. With this guy, the stats really do lie. He's got a strength rating of 64, but it seems so much higher. He's six foot three. He's really Really good at keeping hold of that ball, shielding his body, taking out defenders, and he's got a good finish on him as well, despite the low rating. What a superb finish that is by Ruben Loftus Cheek, and our new number eight for the season, previously 36, makes it Real Madrid nil, Watford once. So you can see why he was so integral for me to bring him back. Honestly, this is one of the most versatile players I have ever used in career mode. The guy can literally play anyway, he's fantastic. So Real Madrid nil, Watford won, and going into the break, I was going down the tunnel fist pump. What a fantastic tactical decision it was to play Loftus Cheek up front as we led here, surprisingly, at the Bernabeu. But in the second half, Real Madrid finally came out of their shells. They had some chances in the first half, but they were half hearted efforts, really, which didn't really trouble Jack Butler. But in the second half, our goalkeeper was called into action on two separate occasions early on. And in the 65th minute, we could have made it 2 0 here as Conor Plianki goes down the left hand side. We signed him for £26 million, and I'm telling you right now, £26 million, I would have asked the board for £52 million. That's double the figure. If I I knew 
knew we were going to get this. Absolutely beautiful from Conor Polianco. He goes down the left-hand side, takes it around his man with the JJ Akocha rainbow flick, taking it over the defender, going through seemingly one-on-one -on -one after nutmegging Pepe unintentionally, admittedly, didn't mean to do it, but he nutmegs Pepe just about. The Portuguese centre-half is struggling to keep up, so he goes to ground, brings down the Ukrainian, and he wins us his second penalty in two games. Incredible start for Conor Plianka. What a fantastic signing he's looking like already, and what a fantastic signing this man's looking like already as well. Mario Balotelli, who already has seven goals in the Premier League, has a chance to make it 2-0 here and get his first in the Champions League, and he does just that as well. The coolest penalty taker in the world right now, Mario Balotelli, sending Kigo Casilla the wrong way, putting it into the bottom corner and making it Real Madrid nil, Watford 2, and Conor Plianka winning his second penalty in two games for us, Mario Balotelli converting his second penalty in two games for us. Got to say right now, these two as new signings are looking absolutely fantastic already, and it is 2-0 to Watford in this game. So two goals up with Watford here at the Bernabeu. I did not think this would be possible coming into the game. Not that I was doubting the team's ability or anything, I just thought Rounders would be too superior for us. Jack Butler then made another good save, but then in the 89th minute here, I couldn't blame Butler for this one. I don't know why I thought the heading the ball backwards there with Joel Matip was going to be a good idea. It was never going to have the distance to reach the edge of the area when you think about where Matip was on the pitch. It was a terrible decision. Butler comes charging out of his goal, held down the triangle button. He didn't get there. Vasquez runs through, takes it round and makes it 2-1 to get round you back in the game after a terrible piece of defending. But thankfully for us, even though Butler's clean sheet goes, which is a bit of a shame, it doesn't matter because we hold on for the win. We hold on for the three points. And what an incredible result this was. Without doubt, in my opinion, the best result of the series so far. We beat Real Madrid away at the Bernabeu at their house by two goals to one. I actually thought we played okay as well, despite the stats showing you that Real Madrid probably played a little bit better than us. I thought we played okay. But either way, a two goal to one scoreline. What a fantastic result. I would have taken a draw before the game, but to win our first game against Real Madrid away, what a brilliant start. I am so, so pleased I've brought in Balotelli and Conor Plianka and Loftus Cheek as well. You can see exactly why it was so important we brought him back to the team but that does it in the episode guys so thank you very much for watching the video I really hope you have enjoyed it if you enjoyed today's episode of career mode then please do leave a like so that's much appreciated it really does help my channel out and I'll see you for the next episode of career mode very soon